Okay, what's up guys? Jordan Bain here. Today we're gonna to deep dive into entry-level lead generation ads uh, through Facebook, but of course advertising across Facebook and Instagram. Look, the purpose of me doing this today, guys, is purely due to the fact of uh, we're starting to engage with a lot of agents at the moment who have previously tried a, a different marketer. I'm gonna call them a discount marketer or a noob marketer. Quite frankly, uh, these guys are you know charging two, three thousand um, uh, dollars to set these ads up, and even often you know two, three thousand dollars a month in management fees to be able to manage these ads on the agent's behalf. Um, it's just absolutely ridiculous, guys. These guys are setting up, as I said, really, really basic lead generation ads. Something that you could do yourself in less than half an hour. I'm going to prove that to you today. Uh, look, my goal here. Number one, I'm a big believer in giving uh, away as much free content as I can. Sure, I'd love to get your business at one stage or another. I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. Uh, but hopefully by seeing the the basic level of, of what these lead generation looks look like today, you can avoid engaging with any basic marketers who are just gonna burn your cash and uh, waste your investment. Uh, second to that, of course, hopefully it shows you uh, just how far a cut above our level of marketing is. And if you do wish to start with what I'm about to show you, as I said before, it's entry level, but it is a really good place to start. Get a bit of a feel for the ads manager, start building some pipeline opportunities. Very rarely do we see instant uh, and genuine uh, leads off the back of this. But as I said, it's a really good place to start. And when you are level ready to level up uh, once again, uh, obviously we would welcome a conversation. So I'm gonna really try and keep this as short and sharp as possible, show you the ins and outs of uh, the back end of Facebook uh, in complete detail. I'm gonna give you, uh, really pull back the curtain on how we would generally run ads if we were doing this type of strategy, of course, as well, uh, and allow you to walk through step by step and set them up yourself. And as I said, save a bucket load of cash uh, and avoid you engaging with any of these new marketers who uh, you know, are just taking your cash. So what we're gonna to do to begin with is we're gonna go to uh, the Facebook Business Manager, okay? So it's a separate site to Facebook. Rather than going to facebook.com, what we're gonna do is go to business.facebook.com. I didn't wanna do that. Ignore what I'm doing here. Just business.facebook.com. And it'll take you to what's called the Meta Suite, more than likely. Now, there's two different platforms with Facebook um, advertising. There's the Facebook Business Suite, which you'll probably see when you log in here. If you don't have an account created, there will be a, a create an account button somewhere there. Just go ahead and create an account. I'm not gonna burn any time walking through that now. There are prompts that will take you through that process um, and pretty easy to follow. So if you don't, uh, as soon as you go to business.facebook.com, if you don't come up with a screen that looks like this, uh, uh, go ahead and create a new account. If it comes up with the business manager, which this is the second platform that I was referring to before, um, stay where you are because that's the platform we wanna use. I can assume that majority of you who are watching and listening to this at the moment will more than likely have the business suite uh, enabled. So uh, as you'll see at the top left-hand corner here, it will say Meta Business Suite. If you're in the Business Manager, it will say Business Manager. Now the Business Manager is actually what we want. To give you a bit of an idea on what the Business Suite is, it's Facebook's uh, ideal way of getting people to create more content, okay? So it's a really easy to use platform, um, quite convenient to a degree. The issue is it's very difficult to run ads, okay? So what we actually wanna do is we wanna to go to the ads manager inside the business manager. The way we do that, so if you are on the business suite, you're gonna follow my instructions. What we're gonna do is go down to the bottom and click on help. Then you're gonna see a button that says switch to business manager. We're gonna go ahead and do that and we're going to switch. Now it's just gonna ask you how, we, how, do, how do we improve don't worry too much about what you put in this. You can't actually move forward. See that on the bottom right hand side, you can't actually give feedback until you put some sort of gibberish in there. So don't worry too much about what goes in there. It just, um, you need to put something in there to schedule that prompt to send the feedback and allow you to then change to the business manager.
Now, once that's switched over, it's gonna look a little bit more like this. Okay, so you're gonna have the meta logo at the top and then home and then ads manager reporting, events manager, things like that, okay? You should also have uh, your account now or your name or your agency, whatever you've got attached um, in this top left-hand corner as well. I'm just gonna to change to someone, actually let's just go, I'm just gonna go to this one. So you won't need to change it. You'll more than likely only have the one in there. If you have more than one in there, don't stress, that's okay. What we're gonna to do to begin with is we're gonna to go to all tools, top left-hand corner there, and we're gonna to navigate to business settings. So there's a few things that we need to set up correctly to begin with to make sure that we can uh, you know, correctly advertise the way I'm gonna show you through today. So to begin with, you're gonna have a couple of different uh, tabs on the left-hand side here, mainly users and people, so users and accounts will be the main two that you use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate, uh, as long as your name is in there, which I assume that it would be, because you're, active, uh, you're actively using your account at the moment, what we're gonna do is click on the accounts tab and that should open up and you should have pages and ad accounts. The first thing we're gonna to navigate to is pages. Now, more than likely, if you're new to the business manager, you will not have any pages attached inside your business manager currently. If you do, great. Uh, and if you do, just make sure that uh, you click on your page and make sure that under people, your name is assigned. If it's not assigned, simply just go to add people, select your name, scroll down to the bottom, turn on Facebook access, and then assign. Okay, I'm not gonna do that now because obviously I've already got access to my page. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to ad accounts on the left-hand side. And again, more than likely, you're not gonna have any ad accounts uh, in here. If you do, great. Once again, just make sure that uh, your name is attached there. If it's not, simply go add people, select your name, and then manage ad account, and then assign. Now, just quickly, if your page obviously isn't attached, simply just go to the blue add button, add a page, type in your name or the name of your page, that'll come up and then obviously go ahead and add page. Now, obviously mine's already added, so it's not gonna work for me. So, um, so here's a quick one. Uh, if you don't, uh, I don't know why this is coming up, but you might get this come up on yours as well. If you haven't created the page yourself, so if you remember back to when you very first created that Facebook business page, if it wasn't created by you, then you're gonna have this issue come up, which basically means uh, you need to get the page ownership changed over. You might think that you've got page ownership, but whoever set up the account originally, or whoever set up the page originally is who Facebook identifies as the page owner. So if someone in your marketing team or an assistant or whatever it might be has set it up, then you will need to get them to change the ownership to you. Uh, you can do that very simply in the facebook.com business settings of your page, okay? So you can just transfer the ownership that way. Uh, just because Facebook's had a lot of security and privacy issues recently in the last sort of 12 or 18 months, of course, uh, they have become quite strict on who they identify as the page owner. So just in case you do have that come up, then obviously you'll have to get the ownership changed over. For the purpose of today, uh, if you do have that come up, don't worry about it, add it in later on. Once you change the ownership over, we're gonna proceed as normal anyway. Inside the ad accounts, if you don't have an ad account created, then same again, go to the blue ad button, which will more than likely be middle of the screen somewhere. And we're gonna to go to create a new ad account. Okay, and what you're gonna do is call that, uh, name it your name ad account. You're gonna select your time zone, uh, which is plus 11. Uh, you're gonna obviously keep it updated to the, the, the Australian dollar. You're gonna go next, and then make sure you select uh, my business, okay? So you are obviously acting out as a, an ad account which we use for your business. Once you select that, you'll be able to go create, and then your ad account will appear here, okay? Now for the sake of today's exercise, because I'm just doing a dummy presentation with you guys, I'm gonna be using this one that says obviously not in use. This is my demo account. Uh, and I'll show you a bit more detail once we dive into it. So at the moment, you should have uh, your, uh, obviously yourself added, obviously go ahead and add any assistance or, or marketing 
people in your team. You should have your page added. And then finally, you should have your ad account now created as well. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna navigate to the ads manager. So go back to all tools and select ads manager. That'll navigate you to a new screen. Now this screen where we're currently at at the moment, not a lot of information here that we really need. What we wanna go is to campaigns on the left-hand side. Now I'm just gonna quickly change this back to the account that I wanna use. Yours should automatically come, come up, of course. And now your page will more than likely look a little bit like this. Just an FYI, if you have done boosting in the past or if you've done any ads through the ads manager in the past, then you will have some campaigns already created. Uh, most of them probably won't be active, but you will have some, um, some previous boosts and previous ads in there. They're more than likely turned on, but they're not delivering anymore, not in use or whatever it might be, okay? So you can just ignore those, or if you wanna keep it clean, if you're OCD like me, just go ahead and select uh, the button on the left hand side here you'll be able to select all or whichever ads you want to delete and then just click on the delete or the bin button here to get rid of those to clean it all up now what we're going to dive into first and foremost is uh, the layout that we're seeing in front of you at the moment okay so the first thing i'm going to draw your attention to is these three tabs up the top here you'll have campaigns ad sets and ads I'm just gonna quickly break down what these define or what these mean. Number one, campaigns. Campaigns is where your objective is held, okay? So what's your objective? What are you trying to achieve with these ads? For example, are you trying to achieve more traffic? Are you trying to achieve more leads? Are you trying to achieve more brand awareness? Whatever it might be. What's your objective? That is held in the campaigns level and you can also set a budget inside the campaigns level as well. Next along is ad sets. Ad sets is uh, where the audience is held. So uh, your detailed targeting, for example, uh, targeting people on interest or behavior level, uh, your geographical location, male, female, age groups, you name it. And you can also control a budget inside ad sets as well. I'm just gonna get to a bit more detail on that in a moment if we need to. Finally, ads, very, very simply, this is where your creative is held. Images, ad copy, headlines and links to wherever you're taking people, okay? So let's start with campaigns. What we're gonna do is click on the green create button. And again, it's gonna start by asking us what our objective is, okay? So for us, what we wanna do, not so much, um, uh, we don't want to worry so much about awareness, traffic, engagement, whatever. Obviously for the moment, we just wanna focus very heavily on generating leads. If I was to run your ads for you, I wouldn't generally run with the leads button, but this is what most people do because again, they don't really focus on warm leads, they just focus on any leads, okay? If we were to create your ads for you, we focus on warm and hot leads, whereas this is more of just a cold and everyone leads um, option, okay? So for the sake of today, we're gonna click on leads. I'm not gonna break down the other ones. You can hover, hover over the top and it will show you a bit more of a breakdown on each of them. As I said, for today, we're just gonna strictly run with leads. Go continue, and that's gonna create the campaign for you, okay? So what we're gonna do, name this campaign as, is lead generation campaign. Okay, so rename it lead generation campaign. We're not gonna change a great deal on this screen. The first thing we're gonna do is just, um, we're gonna control the budget uh, in the uh, in the campaigns level. So what you wanna do is turn on Advantage Campaign Budget. So turn that on. And then of course you can set your daily budget. So whether it's $5, $50, $20, whatever it might be, I'm just gonna go for $10. Generally speaking, I encourage a minimum of $10 per day. Any less, you're kind of just wasting your money. Uh, so let's just go with $10 per day for the time being and leave everything else as is. Okay, so just changing the campaign name and the campaign budget, turning that on and setting your daily budget. Now, just to quickly define the difference between daily budget and lifetime budget. Lifetime budget, obviously pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna set an end date. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this. I think Facebook certainly, and we've tested both. They'll never come out and tell us, but I have tested both daily budgets and lifetime budgets. The same ads, same creative, same objective, everything. 
uh, and somehow the daily budget always outperforms the lifetime budget. I'm a big believer on Facebook is going to support people who are gonna spend more money on the platform. So without an end date in mind, it's like a buyer giving you an end, uh, like a time frame that you need to accept their offer, right? Accept my offer by end of day Friday, otherwise it's null and void, right? It, it just pisses people off. So just give it a daily budget. You can turn it on and off as you please uh, once we go through that. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna run with daily budget rather than lifetime budget. If you do a lifetime budget, generally speaking, no less than about seven days. You're kind of wasting your time any less than seven days. Seven to 14 days is fine, okay? For now though, we're gonna move into uh, the ad sets tab. Uh, and we're going to uh, name this uh, new campaign. Now, once we've done that, how are we converting these leads? Okay, so there's a couple of ways you can do it. Generally speaking, you can uh, direct people to a, a website or a landing page. You've got uh, instant forms or uh, Facebook lead forms is, is what they're called. Then you've got Messenger, and then you can run one, obviously, which is uh, instant forms and Messenger, so you can kind of split test them against each other, calls, and or direct people to an app. Actually, what we're gonna name this ad set as is we're gonna, I'm just gonna run through um, both instant forms and Messenger today. So we'll just name this one Messenger Campaign, apologies. Tick the Messenger box, make sure your Facebook page is selected. We're gonna optimize it for leads as it's already created from the campaigns level. We're gonna start it from today or whenever you're watching this tutorial. And as we come down here is when we can start setting your audience. So you'll see audience and we can define what you want your, who you want your ads uh, to be seen by. So ideally, obviously you wanna keep it strictly to your geographical location. So if you're currently set as Australia or uh, you know, New Zealand or whatever it might be, you wanna try and refine this as much as possible. Now, there's a couple of different things you can do here. You can set it strictly to a, a postcode. Um, so for example, if I was to go uh, for 050, for example, uh, that postcode will come up for that suburb on the Sunshine Coast, right? So you can automatically create that that patch based on that postcode. Um, if I was to include a couple, let's go to the neighboring postcodes as well. You'll notice that 4519 though, for example, creates a bigger patch. So it's actually multiple suburbs under the one postcode. You can't see the suburbs at the moment, but you get the gist of it. So you can do it by suburb based or postcode based or Quite frankly, I generally just try and do like a like a, a radius base more than anything else. So what you can actually do is you can zoom into your area and then simply just drop the pin forever where you, you wanna basically target. Okay, so let's say for example, we drop it there, run with 16 kilometers. You'll notice on the right hand side, you can see your estimated audience size. Now the big thing in here is I wanna really highlight that a bigger audience doesn't always mean more leads, okay? I'm gonna tell you a big secret that most marketers won't tell you in just a moment, but I can tell you right now that a bigger audience doesn't always mean more leads um, because Facebook is working in overdrive to try and learn more about your audience and then ultimately it's just doing a bit of a spray and pray tactic. So sometimes it's best to go with a smaller audience. Generally speaking about 30, 40,000 is the minimum uh, that we, we tend to try and target. That usually works out to be about sort of 10,000 homes, 10, 15,000 homes. But if you wanna go as big as 150, 175, fill your boots, I generally wouldn't do that. So in this instance, I'm gonna bring this down to about 10 kilometers, okay? All of a sudden that brings me down to about 83 to 90,000 people, okay? I'm just gonna run with that for the purpose of today. It fits the suburbs that I wanna target. Um, of course, I'm gonna refine that a little bit further anyway. Once you punch in your location, you'll also see this little pop-up appear up the top here which gives you the option to target people either living in or recently in this location, people living in this location only, or then of course the other ones down the bottom there. We only ever use the top two here. Now I generally just encourage using the people living in or recently in this location, mainly because let's say for example, someone lives in uh, you know, Mullaney and they drive down to Caloundra to have coffee, I'd still sell a property in Mullaney. It's still within some somewhere of my catchment area, 
And if they're having coffee in, in Malayan, in Caloundra, for example, um, they see they're in my target audience and then they drive back home late after their coffee and then they can they still give the opportunity to see my ads. Whereas um, if, for example, you just do people living in this location, you'll notice that quickly it obviously uh, narrows down very, very quickly and it, you won't get the surrounding reach, okay? So again, generally speaking, if you just wanna solely target your area, and of course, I know that a lot of agencies might have strict criteria around what they can target, uh, and they can't overlap neighboring suburbs or postcodes because someone else in their office is targeting that area, uh, then of course, you can st stick to the people living in this area. Uh, but for me, I'm gonna go with people living in or recently in this location. Hopefully that makes sense. Scrolling down, age one's always a big one you wanna change. Let's be real, not many people at 18, 19, 20, 21 own property. Uh, even if you get to 22, 23, 24, sure there are some people who own property at that age. However, you know, is it a minority, is it a majority? Generally speaking, it's a minority. So rule of thumb, I generally just go with about 25 and above. It's gonna bring it down a little bit further for you and again and really narrow down who your target audience is. Of course, we wanna keep it strictly to all genders. We don't wanna, um, uh, be uh, doing male or female. I'll leave that up to you, of course, though. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, detailed targeting. This is where it gets a little bit more exciting. So what I wanna break down here is we wanna tap into people who are actually in real estate mode at any given time, okay? So the way we do that is we target people based on their behaviors. Things like if they're engaging with real estate-related content or real estate-related portals, for example, we can basically target them off the back of that. So what we're gonna do is click on edit and we can start searching the behaviors in here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is if I live in Australia, the main one we wanna target is realestate.com.au. And once that pops up, we're gonna click on select the one that's interests, okay? If you live in New Zealand, TradeMe is definitely the, the one you wanna target instead of realestate.com, okay? So you'd select TradeMe. I'm just gonna leave them both there for the time being. And then you wanna start trying to target your competitors, people engaging with your competitors. So for example, we all know that Ray White's probably the largest agency in the country, unless you're in um, you know, uh, in the West somewhere. So we're gonna to go to Ray White, we're gonna go with things like Harcourts. Uh, we can go Century 21. Again, depending on where you're at, will be depending on who you wanna target. The big thing is here is you cannot target anything, any audiences that don't have a large audience on Facebook, okay? You can keep it pretty vague as well and just go real estate appraisal. Select that one. Uh, you know, you can go for sale by owner. I think one's still there, yep, select that one. Uh, you can go again, even vaguer again, like property or property development, whatever you wanna do, new homes, uh, things like that as well, right? So I'll let you figure that one out. I'm just gonna leave it to, to those five for now, but. Generally speaking, you can probably go as far as like eight to 10, eight to 12 maybe. You won't, don't really wanna go any more than about 12, but I'll leave it with you, okay? Uh, we don't really wanna exclude or narrow your audience too much, leave it uh, pretty open to that. And then we wanna keep it at advanced placements, which is recommended. Now what this is going to basically do is it's gonna, uh, Facebook will use its AI based on the individual who's seeing your ad of where to place that ad. Let me explain. Placements is things like uh, the Facebook newsfeed, the Instagram newsfeed, Facebook stories, Instagram stories, Reels, Marketplace, um, Messenger, for example. So based on the individual who fits your target audience, we don't wanna restrict it. We wanna let Facebook's algorithm and AI do all the heavy lifting for us there. So leave it strictly as advantage placements, okay? A lot of marketers try and overplay their hand and predict where your audience is gonna be seeing it and then they go manual placements just don't do that. It just doesn't work anywhere near as well. I've never seen it work as well um, as advanced placements because some people will spend a lot more time looking at stories and less time on the newsfeed. So if they try and predict it and just put it purely in the newsfeed, you're gonna lose a lot of people. So just keep it with advanced plus placements. And then we're gonna move down to uh, ads, okay? We're just gonna name this one ad one, okay? Again, make sure your Facebook page is selected. Uh, you can select your Instagram account. If you don't have an Instagram account connected, you can simply go connect account. It'll allow, make you log in and that'll connect the accounts for you. 
If you don't have an Instagram account, that's totally okay, of course, as well. You can advertise with your Facebook page through Instagram. Okay, so I'll explain that a little bit more, little bit more detail. If I'm in your audience and I see an ad on Instagram from you, if I click on your profile or your page, it will redirect me to the Facebook platform if I'm on Instagram, okay? Or if I'm on Messenger or whatever it might be. If I'm on Facebook, of course, and I see your ad and I click on your profile or your page, then of course it's gonna keep me on Facebook. So you can, because Instagram is owned by Facebook, you can advertise on Instagram with a Facebook page, okay? So if you keep your Instagram account strictly for personal and you try not to dive too much into business, that's okay, you don't need to connect it. Simply just go use selected page, which will automatically uh, redirect it to your Facebook page. Now, ad setup. We're gonna go and create an ad. Single image is what we're gonna do. Carousel would just basically mean multiple images that they can swipe through. Just a distraction if they go carousel. Typically, we're just gonna go single image or video. Add creatives, we're gonna add some media. So we're gonna go add an image or add video. Um, I'm just gonna select anything that I've got in my library at the moment, but for you, what you would do, of course, is um, upload, and then obviously you can select something uh, from there. So I'm just gonna find, uh, I think these are all videos, unfortunately. I'm just gonna go upload, just so I can have something. Let's go any old fit picture. Just so I can use a photo. Because Persh, I'm a big believer on photos. Uh, I love, I love uh, video, however, I'm not a huge, video fan for advertising. The reason being is when you're trying to get people to take an action, when they stop and start watching the video, they often get distracted about what the actual call to action is. They forget why they stopped and then you basically get them watching this video and all of a sudden they don't take the action that you actually want them to take because they're distracted by this video and then they keep scrolling. People's attention spans are like goldfish, right? So you wanna keep it really, really easy, really, really simple for them. Uh, generally speaking as well, quick disclaimer, Photos of people always outperform uh, you know, general marketing collateral that you might have created in Canva or InDesign or Illustrator or whatever it might be. The reason being is people buy people. People are on Facebook because it's a social media. It's a social network, okay? Social is people, okay? So when, and because people's bullshit radars are incredibly high for advertising these days, if it looks, smells, reads like an ad, generally speaking, they're gonna scroll straight past it, okay? So generally try and aim for a photo of you, a, a behind the scenes shot, photos with clients or buyers um, always helps as well, or at open homes and things like that. So let's go next. Now you wanna obviously fit this uh, or crop it for, for each medium. And generally the best thing to do is just go what's, whatever is recommended, okay? Um, obviously you can crop it and move it around if you wanna get the other person in the shot if there's more than one, or your angle's not very good. Uh, same deal if you wanna crop this one just to get, say, me in it. Uh, it's pretty simple to do. Uh, then you're just gonna go next, and then done. Don't worry about any steps here, just go straight away, click on done. Okay, now we've got something that's actually starting to look a little bit like an ad. If you look on the right-hand side here, I can't scroll there at the moment, but you can see that an ad is starting to form. Okay, as we scroll down now, we're gonna move to the primary text. So depending on what your offer is here, is let's say for example, you're looking for appraisal leads, or whatever it might, let's just go appraisal leads to keep it to keep it really simple. Um, what you wanna basically do is just get straight to the point. Don't worry about over complicating your ad copy too much or your text. Keep it really, really short, sharp to the point. Don't worry about being all fluffy. They know that you're a real estate agent. They want a bullshit, no bullshit approach, okay? So um, if you're, I'm just throwing something out here for you guys. If you're thinking of selling uh, and need an updated, market appraisal on your property, please click below. And let's put a little emoji in there as well. Oop, probably do one below. Okay, that's enough. That's probably all you really need, right? Something just short and sharp, one or two sentences is plenty. Headline, uh, let's go with uh, you know what? What they might do is once we get their details come through, we might be texting them an appraisal, for example. Now we used to do a lot of text appraisals. Quite frankly, uh, they don't work anywhere near as they used to. But you're pretty limited on options here because you haven't got a landing page or a website to direct people to to give them an instant appraisal. 
you still have to do the work in order to get it, okay? So what you're gonna do here is um, uh, text, uh, or let's just go um, appraisal sent to your mobile. And then we'll have a little picture of a phone. That'll do. Again, I'm just trying to give you a, a quick snapshot here, guys. You can do whatever you like in here, so I'll leave that up to you. Description, I generally just leave the description empty. Uh, then of course, we're gonna have the call to action. In this instance, we're gonna do a, a send message. So it's gonna to go to the messenger. So it's gonna be a messenger lead form, okay? Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new uh, messenger or message template, okay? So go create. And what we're gonna do here is go with a welcome message. So you'll see that they automatically collect the name. Um, so what we're gonna do here is let's go with, we can start that, that welcome message is fine. Let's go to questions. If you wanna customize that, feel free. What I'm gonna do here is get rid of the custom, custom one and I'm gonna go add uh, an address. Uh, town city is what we want. Oh, it's already there. Uh, let's go with, what else can we add? Address. Phone number. Scroll down again and go to, let's get their email address as well. Okay, so we've already got their name of course, because uh, they're on Facebook, so we can already see their name. So what we want to ask them to begin with is, um, what town or city do you live in? Or let's just change this to town or suburb. Don't allow them to skip it because they're gonna give you a, their response. And then that response will trigger them to the next step, okay? What's your phone number? Don't let them skip that either. And then what's your email address? Okay. Uh, just see if we wanna add anything else. No, nah, that'll, that'll be fine. That's all we really need. Again, we don't we don't generally use these chatbot messages, by the way, um, just because they don't get as anywhere near as good of results. Uh, and then obviously your, your completion message can probably just be the same as what that is. Thanks for answering your question. Our questions will contact you to let you know what happens next. And then you can just send them a text message or an email or um, give them a call. I'll leave that up to you, okay? Privacy policy. You will need to include a privacy policy um, this would just be uh, generally the privacy policy of your agency. So for example, um, you can just get your your agency website. Ideally, um, most of you will have a privacy policy attached to your website as is. Um, let's just preview that. Oop, view terms, I probably need to agree to the terms. Yes, great, preview a messenger. Hopefully this comes up for me. We're gonna pop up on my phone. So you can check that and that'll give you a better idea on how it looks. Hopefully that gets sent to your, to your mobile, to your messenger on your actual account, okay? But this is generally how it's gonna look. What they'll do is they'll give you a suburb, they'll give you a uh, phone number, email address, or of course, if you wanna customize this by the way, you can obviously just ask a full question, just go a custom question. It doesn't look like we can do address anymore which is a bit of a pain. Again, Facebook's just getting really strict on this. This is why we don't use this stuff because if you stick to Facebook's criteria, it just doesn't work very well. Anyway, let's just run with that for the time being. Save and finish. Finish your template, yes, got it, great. Now, this template will be set. Yes, use existing automated chat, created 11th, uh, 2nd of the 11th, 2022. Now, what you'll also need to do is you'll need to set up a pixel so that we can retarget people who engage with your ad. So you're gonna go set up and then just name your pixel, uh, your name pixel, okay? Set it for engagement. So anyone who engage, engages with your posts, uh, I'm not gonna do it today because it's gonna be a bit time consuming, but anyone who engages with your posts and then once you select it, it should automatically um, select down here. Okay, so make sure you set up a pixel because we wanna be able to retarget people who are engaging with your ads. Now, one more thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna create uh, a lead form one as well. So what I'd recommend is 
actually just duplicating your messenger campaign. So just go to quickly duplicate and keep it in the original uh, campaign. So duplicating your, your uh, messenger campaign ad set and keeping it into your original campaign. So we're just gonna change this one to lead form campaign. Now you've got the two, okay? So you can actually test which one works better. They're both not gonna work very well, but you can test which one works better. Change it to instant forms. Okay, and scroll down. Everything will pretty much stay the same here. Just double check that your audiences are all set correctly. Great. And then we can move down to your ad. So ad one will stay the same because it's ad one inside this ad set, whereas this ad one is is inside the messenger um, ad set. Okay. Same deal. This all should be pretty similar straight away. Just add your media again. I'm just going to run with the same image. You can change your image up. I'll leave it up to you. Probably a good idea to maybe keep the same image for the testing process um, and then change it up later on if it doesn't work. But if you want to run with two separate ones, that's fine as well. Now we're running short on time here. I think we're already about 35 minutes. So I'm going to breeze through this. Primary text, I'm just going to copy paste it directly from this one. So dump that in as well. Grab the headline. Drop that in. Obviously this one, oh, that's annoying. On your phone, uh, headline. And we now need to go to create an instant form. So create a new instant form. Uh, you can just keep it, rename the form if you need to. Uh, my, more volume or higher intent. I'll leave that one up to you when you want to do. More volume is probably a good place to start. Intro. Uh, we're going to go with, uh, please complete the form below to receive an appraisal on your home. It's not going to let me have that many words. So we're just going to go receive an appraisal. Right, you can jazz that up however you like. Um, uh, include uh, additional details if you wish. I'm not going to uh, include any additional questions. What we want, of course, is very similar questions again. So we're going to go uh, multiple choice. Where are we? Name and email address. They're already there. So let's go name first and then add a category. Contact fields. Street address. Bingo. There we go. This one's actually giving us a street ad address option. Uh, that's all we need. You want to keep it short and sharp. You never want to ask more than like three or four questions, by the way. So just keep it strictly to those three. Privacy, same deal. We're gonna add in a link to your website. Uh, add link, paste, privacy policy. Uh, completion, uh, you can obviously redirect people from there if you wanna direct them to a website. Let's just go with publish for the time being. I'll have to put it in, there we go, redirect. Once they're all set, missing something again, enter message, enter details below. Just follow the prompts here, guys. Again, I'm pretty conscious of time. I'm trying to get through this as quickly as we can. I know I've taken up a lot of time already. Description, um, instant, or you know, uh, text appraisal to your mobile. Publish. What that's basically gonna do now is, so either one, so if when people see your ads now, they will see uh, an ad in their newsfeed with this photo that, I, that we set up before, uh, and they'll click on, if they click on the ad, one option will be is a, a chat bot will open straight away, and then they'll have prompts to, to be able to answer. Alternatively, what we've just set up here is a Facebook lead form. So a Facebook lead form will open up straight away, and then again, so they're staying on the platform. The reason I don't generally like keeping them on the platform is because there's distractions everywhere on Facebook, okay? I generally prefer to push them to a landing page or um, what we'll call like a, a lead funnel. I'll just quickly drag another screen across now so you can see it. So this is like a general landing page that we normally build for our clients, customize it to their branding and their color palette. But basically you'll see that obviously there's the call to action middle of the screen straight away. What's your property worth? People can just type in their, their, their address and basically immediately get an on-screen appraisal pretty much straight away. 
Um, so they're getting instant value from you. That instant value, now you can see estimated property value. The price guide is blurred out though. This is a really cool thing. You can see as a consumer, it's in with arms, within arm's reach. So that's all I really wanna get. I just wanna see that price guide. Click the button, reveal your price, your property value. That's where I punch in my details. What I'm looking to do, buy a property, sell a property, buy and sell, do a bit of research. Let's say for example, I'm selling my property. I agree for consent to be contacted. So basically when I do my follow-up calls, uh, I'm not getting people in the back foot. People are expecting my phone call. And then that price guide appears. It's all extracted from CoreLogic, as you can see. We give disclaimers everywhere. We only ever give medium confidence, never high confidence, just to protect the agent. As I scroll down, property history, auction stats for the area, ton of information. It's pretty much like a CMA quality report on screen straight away. Hopefully you've just heard that email come through on, on this recording. Um, basically, we, re, we automatically send them uh, an email back to this report and a text message back to this report as well. So it's much, much more uh, advanced. It's a far cut above just doing um, lead forms or, uh, or uh, chatbots. Um, but obviously this is a really good place to start. As I said, my purpose with today's video was purely to pull back the curtain on what most other marketers, social media marketers are charging you an arm and a leg to do when it literally takes, what are we up to at the moment, 41 minutes when it would take you less than an hour to complete yourself, okay? So once you've created those two campaigns is when you can publish them. So you're gonna go ahead and click the publish button down the bottom green one down here, um, or you can simply click close out and then publish draft items. I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna publish these. And then you're gonna have your ads running, okay? Final thing that I'm gonna show you is I want you just to get your uh, column set the way that's easier to understand. So we're gonna click on this little button here that highlights over columns. Scroll down, we're gonna to go to customize columns. Now you're more than likely going to have a ton of different columns on the right hand side here, like mine do at the moment. We're gonna get rid of everything except for delivery and amount spent. So just close out of all of them. Actually, if you've got reach and impressions there, keep those there. Uh, also, if you've got frequency, leave that there. Link clicks, leave that there. Close out of everything else. The other thing you're gonna do is just type in link. So if you type any of those up on the top here in the search bar, you'll see them come up. So they're the ones, the sort of eight or so that I wanna have in mind. Delivery, amount spent, reach, impressions, frequency, link clicks, uh, click through rate, and then cost per click. You can move these around if they're not in exact order. Best to have them in the order that I've got at the moment. Simply just pause this video while you do it, then click on apply. Come back up to the top, click on the tabs button again, and then you're gonna go save, and you're gonna name this official tracking, okay? Come back to it one more time, go down to the bottom and set that as your default. So every time you come in now, you can basically see how much you've spent, how many people you've reached, impressions, frequencies, basically how many times, uh, the average number of times per people saw your ad, link clicks, click through rate, and cost per click, okay? All really cool things. Now what I've just shown you here today, guys, is purely just for a cold audience, okay? If you wanna really advance your targeting, if you wanna really go next level and really build more frequency and, and do retargeting. For those who don't know what retargeting is, you'd be familiar with the strategy, whether you're familiar with the term or not. Very, very simply, retargeting are those ads that follow you around the internet day in, day out. These ads that I've just shown you how to create right now will not do that for you, okay? So you're simply just targeting a cold audience at all times, again, this is why it's a no-brainer not to go and pay someone to do it, for you, do it for you. Just do it for yourself because you know they're not even real marketers. They're noobs and they don't really know what they're doing anyway, right? They don't understand the real estate industry. For those who don't know, I've still got an agency, a, a real estate agency. I've been in real estate for 12 years myself. So the way we target, the way, up, way we operate is consumer-centric. We understand our consumer. We know how to target them. We know how to communicate with them. Then we know how to get them into our funnel and extract their details, okay? This that I've just shown you today is a great place to start, however, okay? So try this out, see how you go. Try not to spend too much money on it. Uh, let me know what you think uh, about it. And if you are interested, of course, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna put my own call to action in here now. If you do wanna go cut, a cut above, introduce something like this, like an automated appraisal tool that still captures their details uh, and, and obviously um, gives a ton of value at the same time, let me know if you want to deep dive into building out warmer audiences, 
building out frequency, retargeting, all that jazz. Reach out and we can talk about doing it for you. For now, thanks for tuning in, guys. Hopefully this has been of value and we will see you on the next one.